Welcome to a COVID free Lower Creek. I can say that because we've been isolated for years. <laughs> hey, well, I know that it's hard to get you to believe me, but I just want you to know that if you're ever feeling down or depressed, and you just feel like everything's wrong with your life and you want it to stop, just know that there are people there for you, whether you're aware of it or not. It's a really hard time for you, I promise you. It just takes time and a little bit of effort. I know you won't believe me at first, but you just have to have a little bit of faith and a little bit of hope. If you're listening to this, just know that I believe in you. It's been a while. This is um, Dyke River Dyeworks. I'm Kay. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Andalane K. You can find me on Instagram as Andalane K. And I think on YouTube, I may have tried to change the name of the podcast. Um, no guarantees. Um, I think it still might be Dyke River Dyeworks. Um, I think I tried to change it to Adelaine K and I nearly deleted everything but considering this is DRD 8 it wasn't a lot to delete <laughs> it's a podcast about living sustainably living sustainably uh, knitting crochet um, spinning yarn um, all that sort of floofy stuff, um, arts and crafts, um, yeah, saying I'm a lot. So there you go. Welcome. Grab a cuppa, um, and do what you got to do, and yeah, sit back and relax for a little bit, and uh, let's take some time out. I think we deserve it. There we go. I have abs. <clears throat> I have absolutely no idea what I've said. I've deleted bits, I've not deleted bits, managed to get a low battery, almost go flat. Um, yeah, and now I need to do something else. So I don't wait. <laughs> it's been too long. Oh, oh, what was I up to? Yes. I don't know. No. Finished objects. I have some. Um, uh, lots, lots. Oh my god, lots of works in progress. Not quite sure. I haven't gone through the last time I recorded. <sighs> I think I had a lot of plans to cast on a lot of work. Um, knitting. I've started some crochet. I've dug through or oh, I've done a deep deep stash dive and found I've crocheted a lot of granny squares varying styles and colors and fiber types and I've decided that I have this thing about granny squares I have a lot and I don't know why I think I was planning I know I did a um, gorgeous gal coat. Uh, I'll put a picture up here, or here in this general vicinity. Um, and I have granny squares left over for that because of my um, predilection of making things way too big for me. Um, I have lots of leftovers. Uh, I know I had a plan to do a either a cardigan or maybe another throwover type garment. Bavarian crochet. I have a lot of Bavarian. Oh, yeah, Bavarian crochet squares. Uh, 
don't know, granny squares. I've got granny squares. And some with flowers in the middle of it. I don't know what they were for. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can see, but there-ish. Is that there? Move my head. No. Yeah. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> there right there there's another pile of granny squares uh, yeah don't know um so i've been doing some crochet um knitting i've finished some bits spinning i've been spinning a bit and um this here i'll start with is a finished object yeah. <laughs> just fogged up the glasses <laughs> Oh, I've got new glasses. <laughs> I can see. And there's. Is this attractive? You see this? Oh my god. Now you can see me wobbly old neck. Um, this is my hand spun. Um. Post all the floods and fires and in social lockdown, um, I got into um, some alpaca that I was given. Um, and um, I eco dyed it. So you can see the eh, that's got white in it. It's a, a blend of alpaca and merino. Um, I spun the alpaca. The alpaca was um, given to me a while back. Oh, excuse me. Gonna... There we go. Not bad. Not better. And the eco dye is what uh, um, we call trap black. It's made from the bark of um, spotted gum. And you boil it and boil it and boil it and boil it. And it goes to a tarry black. And um, a friend of ours has some traps that he, um, if they're new or any metal work that he doesn't want to shine, he paints them, hence trap, and it goes, um, takes the shine off and makes them a, um, uh, a dark metal colour. So hence the name trap black. Um, and when you put it with um, animal fibres, it doesn't need mord mordanting. Um, it has a lot of tannin in it, being a bark. And uh, yeah, it, it dies up to a warmish grey, to a very, very dark, um, depending on how thick and how thick the mixture is so that I suppose that's the intensity of the color of it um, to um, grays and I've mild this so held it um, two strands uh, one of um, alpaca and one with a, um, a merino alpaca blend hold those two strands together as, as you know, I knit them together so it ends up being mild and um, yeah, this was the uh, first lot of dyeing, and, and I over dyed it, and I think I dyed it three times and just let it sit for ages. Um, so that's the the dark. It's a black color, blacky dark blacky gray, to um, not quite as dark, to pale. It's blowing out. So it's looking white, but it is a mild um, white and grey because of the merino. I added um, white, just undyed merino top that I'd spun up. Um, it's not perfect. It's got a lot of thick and thin, but for the purpose of here in winter, fabulous. It's so warm and um, yeah. I'm, I'm rather happy with it and uh, it's long and uh, 
Nice. So that's one. One finished object. There we go. I can't see anything. Got my hair on, got my glasses on. There we go. Better. Um, started making yogurt and sourdough. Oh, the sourdough. Oh my god. It's really good. It's not what I expected. The <laughs> one batch of sourdough looked beautiful. On YouTube, there's a bazillion videos of people making perfect sourdough with dome tops and oh lovely mine looked like that the crust felix had to take it down to the workshop to cut it in with a bandsaw <laughs> <laughs> it worked it was just a little bit crusty that's all um I don't know, is it supposed to be that crusty? It like there's there's chewy crust and then there's a concrete wall, sort of bleh. um the last batch that I made, I um it's not quite as tough, but it's still really a hard crust. I don't know if it's meant to be like that. It's not quite bandsaw material. Um it's definitely serrated knife and patience. Um, the inside's fine. Um, before all this COVID business um, came down, I decided I was going to replace our bread maker. Our bread maker died, the and um, we just would was just buying bread. So I decided in January to replace it. So I put an online order for a bread maker. Uh, COVID really put the brakes on that. Um, I still don't have it. Apparently the delivery date now is in July. Um, all I want is not to actually bake the bread in, but to make the dough, all that kneading. Oh. Um, yeah, no. There are other other ways of making bread, hence the sourdough. Um, I'll just have to find something else. The the mother for the sourdough. I'll um, take some photos of it. It's um it's working. I've got it. I can do that. Works beautifully. And uh, when I get too much of it, um in in my container, I'll pour some out and I'll make um. It's kind of like a. Um, a buttermilk pancake you pour it into a pan butter fry it up and um, it's only flour and water and bacteria <laughs> sounds delightful glue and bacteria um, and it, it puffs up it rises um, it, it makes a great pancake but it has a sour like sour cream or that tang of yogurt to it. It's a savoury. So it works beautifully with um, cream cheese or a savoury type topping with it. Um, my go-to for a long time was pancakes with a bit of manuka honey. Um, just squirted across the top of it. Um, the blend of sweet and sour with the sourdough pancake and the honey is... Well, the Munuka honey has a very strong taste to it anyway. It's interesting. Probably an acquired taste. Not bad. I don't mind it. But it's better with cream cheese or a savoury type topping on it. Anyway, that was my breakfast this morning. <laughs> so I've been making sauna, making yogurt. Um, we didn't get any citrus. Oh, we got a handful of citrus this year because they were pretty well scorched through the fires. So, um, yeah, no citrus this year. Um, our ginger is coming on a treat. Um, the leaves are... Top growth is starting to yellow off. So when that dies back, it will be time to dig it out of the ground. 
Um, it's the roots are getting big enough that they're starting to push themselves out of the ground. So we actually might end up with a good crop of ginger. There's um, turmeric, both the orange and the red coming up in odd places. Uh, because the floods washed out, I had trays of seed stock set up and because the floods have washed all of that away, it's scattered it across the property. So we're getting turmeric coming up in odd places. I think there's going to be some very healthy cows out there <laughs> grazing on turmeric. The garlic, we salvaged enough garlic that um, for personal use, uh, commercial crop size garlic is no longer... There are um, a lot of people that we've given the garlic away to. So um, if we need any garlic in the future, they said that they'd be quite happy to dig us up some and give our own garlic back to us. <laughs> but we're fine for the moment. Tim's just off camera. He doesn't know what this is. Timmy. sister we have a feral cat prowling around at night it's a big ginger tom Timmy hello say hello 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 oh my god <laughs> well don't then and ta-da this oh forgot the pen wait Oh, there it is. Um, Pom Pom Quarterly Magazine. It was Wood Woodwardia. Eh, one of those. Woodwardia, I think. Yes, with the fake faux seeming and the roll tops. Top, top thing. It was pink and it's a, -da, it's a boxy with knitting and with knitting, <laughs> ribbing. Um, yep. Here we go. Raglan. Then I've got a bit of floof. I haven't washed or blocked it yet. Oh God. Oh, that's a, a nubby bit from this type of wool. This is a, a vintage. DK wool. Um, I don't know what it's called. Um, it's 100% wool. Um, it's just called DK. Double knitting. And that's it. Double knitting. Um, don't know. Uh, probably from the 60s or 70s. Really old. But yeah. I've maybe got enough for a, a, um, a cardi um, of this particular and I found doing all this that this color burnt maroon um, some people call it mauve um, uh, maroon to, to burgundy plum color I don't that set of colors seems to be what I'm, I'm drawn to you see this I have another jumper I actually have a th marina thermal and a, another jumper underneath this it's been a bit cool <laughs> anyway I, excuse my my boobage well, look similarity <laughs> but wait there's more I don't know if I can do it <coughs> I'm wearing docks and there's the sole of my foot. Sorry if that offends some people, but <laughs> Wait, that, that's better. Look, check the colour. It it matches. Uh, so <laughs> I bought <laughs> in my wisdom online and went, oh they they're really cool. I've never ever ever fit boots 
before, as in zip up the side, long under your knee, finish at your knee, boots. And I'm like, yep, it must have been a COVID reaction or something. I'm going to buy that. So I bought a pair and they fit. And guess what colour they are? <laughs> yes, yes, they're, they're that. Um, actually, I think I've had a bit of a reaction to COVID. Um, I'm of an age. Okay, I'm 50, 58 this year. I'm 57. Um, if I were to catch it, considering my previous medical history, I have lung damage because I caught swine flu. Yay, good on me. Um, I don't think I'd survive. And that's the honest truth. I think I would be a statistic. And my husband and I had discussed it, but oh, I'll to you. Um, there's a very strong possibility that, yeah, we would be statistics. And um, I think in reaction, I've gone out and bought things like long boots. Um, I've bought other things. Um, yeah, I think it's reactionary. But anyway, um, I'm having fun with it. <laughs> Despite that. Um, where was I? Oh, the colour. Uh, one other thing that I've, I've also purchased. It looks like we're just getting into purchases at, about, at the moment. I haven't ever been one of those podcasters that here's my stash acquisition section here's my purchases i've never really done that because i've always been into recycling and using what's been gifted and or renew reuse and, and that sort of thing and here i am buying things it's like ah, it's not really um yes and again on the this colored theme there's a pom-pom I'm going to be all matchy-matchy, but my first time ever buying um, wool from an indie dyer, another, like, I dye it my own and do all that sort of thing, but I bought it from someone else, um, and I, I was thinking at the time, other people need to be supported. There are businesses closing down, people losing work and this sort of thing. People working from home need a little bit of support, so I'm going to throw my support their way. And so I'm buying this. Oh, excuse me, that's snorted. Ah, I, you, that's the way I justify it for me. I don't know. Uh, crazy times. But anyway, um, I bought this. I don't, now it's all in the sunshine and flaring it. That's a bit better. Oh, my God. <laughs> Have you ever, as a kid, had fairy bread? I saw this and went, oh, fairy bread. I can't eat fairy bread now, but I'm going to wear it. <laughs> um, so I've, I've seen this, and it's by Dying Dream. And, excuse me, I need to change my persona. I need a second pair of glasses to see properly. <laughs> Dying Dream. So they're Dying Dream, D Y E I N G, Dream, Dying Dream on Etsy. Um, Australian. And um, they have fiber and a whole range of different things. So I um, don't know if you can see that. Is that in or out of focus? No idea. <laughs> there you go. It's 100% merino. No, it's not. Oh, my God. I'm lying. It's 70% merino. The sun's coming in. <laughs> so I'm going to get all, all flary. 70 cent. 70, 70 cent. 70% um, 70 oh, flop over here too. Australian merino. 20% nylon, 10% silk, 200 metres to 100 grams. 
and oh, look at this. Look at that. Look at that color. Oh my God. It's nowhere near. Oh, so we've got little bits of Maroni bits in it. So I'm going to have a beanie made out of this gorgeousness with the maroon pom-pom. Oh, maroon pom-pom on top. Yep, flaring out. Yeah. And the pom-pom is something that my cats absolutely will fight each other for. Um, I've just made a whole lot of dust. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's a faux fur, faux fur pom pom, and I I was for ages five and up. <sighs> um, I don't know the Pepperell Pepperell Braiding Company, twenty two Lowell, Lowell Street, Lowell Street Pepperell M A. Where's M A? In the States? MA. Massachusetts, is it? I don't know. But if you're there, if you're one of the... Um, oh, look. Not that many people see this anyway. <laughs> it's from the States. An extravagant pom-pom. Um, yeah. But I thought, oh, that and that. Fabulous. And uh, hold that thought. There we go. Um, uh, break up my um, my purchasing. I'll show you my. Oh, it's another one. This is another pom pom that I got, along with the maroon one. Slightly smaller than the maroon one, but it's got a button in it. Or um, um, an attachment that you sew a button on and hook it through so you can take it off. Oh, I'm showing myself. <laughs> oh my god. It's been a while, hasn't it? So yeah, this is a... Out of my... Oh, oh that's... <laughs> my hand-dyed... Eternal Aqua... I can't remember what I've called it. I just made up a hat. And uh, I made it. <laughs> Doesn't it go beautifully with the maroon? Mm, yeah. Colour theory was never really my strong point. But, yeah. It's a, um, a light... DK to sport weight, um, tonal variations. Um, I dye it um, with a fairly vibrant yellow first and then put the um, turquoise over the top. So I end up with um, some tonal variation in there. Don't know if you can see. Um, I'll be doing a lot more dyeing this summer because um, basically I can't grow anything to sell at market so I need a plan B and I think that might be it um, if I take a break from study <laughs> um, I need to change glasses again Sorry about that. I don't have transition lenses or bifocals or anything like that because going up and down stairs can be a little bit interesting. Um, you end up sort of walking on the moon. Anyway, old people problem. Um, oh no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I had a moment of indignation about there was a guy in. Um, yes, I am going there. Um, I don't know where he was, a younger person, um, Victoria, saying he's not going to do any social distancing, he doesn't 
believe that the COVID business is um, that bad. He's young. Old people are old. They're going to die anyway. So he's not going to change it, what he does. <sighs> it's not only old people, you dip. It's people your age that are getting sick and having long-lasting health effects. Anyway, karma. Um, this is the Bavarian crochet that I was talking about. Um, can't remember what the yarn is. I think it's um, Moda, Moda Vera from Spotlight. Think something maybe. It's um, a variegated um, type of yarn, and it's quite fluffy. Yeah, I think it's maybe um, a merino acrylic blend. Don't quote me on that, but yeah, the Bavarian managed to get my head around it, and the front pattern yeah it's okay it's it's a little bit busy and a bit textured for my liking I like a fairly smooth um, finish so yeah that's that's not too bad I prefer the back to me the back looks more like watercolor so what I was planning on doing was um, doing this Bavarian and making a um, cardigan, but having this sign, the supposed wrong sign, on the outside, because I thought it would have a nice watercolor effect, but I didn't get that far. I just made a whole lot of squares and then stuck them in a bag and left them. Obviously, I couldn't come to a decision as to how to um, style the cardigan. Anyway, um, I made a fairly... I made two major, major purchases. One, a minor major. <laughs> and... Oh, my God. Yep, Ashford. I bought myself an e spinner. $800 worth. Yeah, I know. Um, I have two spinning wheels the castle, the old one that was given to me, which is beautiful spins really finely and then I have the oh other one which is a traditional shape spinning wheel um, which is my workhorse and I bought the e-spinner so I could come up here in the house and spin because the other two are clunky so you get the clink 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 they make noises and they squeak and whenever and it's not regular I can't pin down exactly what the noises are, when the noises are going to happen, but it would drive Felix nuts. <laughs> A rhythmic noise. So, I got this. Electrical bits. Oh, look at that. It's... Yeah. Um, huge bobbin. Huge bobbin. I need some fishing line. Because somehow in I cropped up <laughs> as I do. Get they give you a supply of piece of fishing line that you put across the top of this wheel here as as a a break sort of thing, and um, one half of it goes on here, and I'll just tighten that up as the break. There we go, sits over there like that. And um, I cut it too short. 
They give you detailed instructions with pictures. And I cut it too short. The one part goes on here, on, on this as the break. The other one, they give you um, a lazy Kate and that is tensioned. I uh, don't know how to work that, but anyway. Um, yeah, I cut it too short. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I haven't used it in anger as yet. But the wood is made of wood. And, like, this house is made of wood. Obviously, it's it's woody. It's It's wood wood looking wood this is wood but it feels like plastic am i i'm must be really out of the loop um yeah it's very finely made and finished and it's quiet very quiet major acquisition number one um and because I bought that, I bought fluff, bought more fluff. Now I buy spinning material. Um, it seems exclusive, ex exclusively from um, one Indie Dyer. Indie Dyer? Local Dyer? Um, felting you. Um, Hand-dyed merino. That's basically... I get lots of it from her. Um, excuse me. I'm assuming it's a her. Um, but I've got that one. That's 100% merino in cocktail. So I bought cocktail, cocktail. Excuse me. <laughs> Marshmallow. Point. In summer. Is that all? No, wait. There's more. Another cocktail. So three lots of cocktail. Three? Yeah, three lots of cocktail, a marshmallow and a summer. In 100% merino. Um, they spin up really nicely. I will really like the colours that they dye and they're for 100 grams um, that's $12. Really? Um, I don't mind it. Uh, not at all. So felting you I don't know if you can see that but there it is felting you um, through Etsy and um, I think it's a bargain there we go right <sighs> crochet the squares dun, 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 dun. Hmm. work in progress work in progress to what I don't know I'm just doing it. I started out with um, Sandra Paul, Sandra Paul, Cherry Heart, Cherry, Cherry Heart, Cherry Heart podcast. She brought out a pattern um, for a granny square blanket um, in two versions. I think there was a kit. She's in the UK. Um, really nice really nice patterns and um, easy but I think it's a color palette that really appeals um, gentle and pastel shades and I've completely not followed that at all <laughs> not pastel shades at all <laughs> they're bigger than what she has um, and then I just went off on a tangent <laughs> and just I just started doing 
your traditional granny squares. Now I had, this is a stash of um, cotton acrylics that, um, I think that that's cotton cotton. Um, some of them I have followed her pattern. Others, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Mainly, I've not followed her pattern. I've just gone off on a. Is that one? I don't know if that's one of hers. Yes, I think that is. Um, yeah. And just started doing my own thing because I was just needed something something that was nothing I didn't want to think my brain was full I didn't want to concentrate on anything I'd had enough I couldn't cope with anything on the outside following directions between study and the world around me no after last year the fires the whole business has had a lasting effect and now this shit fight that's going on nope i need i need uh, therapy <laughs> yeah, yeah. so i have again gone off in um a tangent gone off on a tangent um it, it's really soft. Being a cotton, predominantly a cotton acrylic, can't tell you what it is. It's just this. Like blends of everything that I've thought, okay, that's cotton or a cotton blend. Chuck it in here and away we go. I think it's predominantly from Spotlight, um, um, Beetle, or one of their cotton um, acrylic blends. And um, it's gonna, it's really soft. It's um, nice to handle. And being granny squares, easy to do. I've got it on a, look. Here's one. <laughs> Don't know what that's starting out to be, but it's gonna be a granny square. Um, three. some sun three millimeter hook yes just a, on a three millimeter hook um, that's on the floor put together a stash bag of chunky to thick DK as a lightest um, wool as in 100% wool and yeah I'll, I think it's that's showing up very much as football colours <laughs> but that's a um, 200 gram Bendigo Woolen Mills Murano. Murano? 100% new wool. So I was given uh, by a good friend a whole stack of that. So what I'm going to do is put together a whole lot of stripes and then sew those stripes together. And this bit here is my very first, yes, it's that bit. This bit here is my very first knitting. And all the way through, like it's garter stitch, 
but it's not knitting knitting I purl I didn't know how to actually do the knit stitch so I did the purl stitch so she said flicking which I don't flick I'm a continental knicker knicker <laughs> I've got continental knickers <laughs> um yeah um <laughs> I'm a continental knitter. <laughs> Not knickers. <sighs> so I purled it. I purled, purled and purled. Didn't realise that there was actually another knit, uh, another stitch to it. And I purled. Went through my wool stash and purled. And then realise, I think that this one, where it sort of, goes a bit wonky there that oh I can do something else oh I think I've found on YouTube or something knitting <laughs> there's a knit stitch which is like for me continental is just basically a pick picking that's easier than than doing this oh oh wrong figure <laughs> I'm on a roll today. Um, yeah, so then I, yeah. And then got my stitch count wrong. But anyway, it'll all come out in the wash. So I'm going to sew all of those together, those strips. I'll just keep going until I've finished all of the... In my stash bag. Um, I've got... Chunky wool and I've got more of that Murano... And I've got this this is the remains of an alpaca Bolivian alpaca sweater that I had excuse me for saying it like that but that's the shop where I bought this jumper she spoke like that <laughs> I don't know where she was from um, Bolivian and um, yeah so I pulled it apart and that will go into the blanket and that's another work oh, what am I doing? Another work in progress. So it's um just knit. It's no brain. It's uses uses no brain power. And eventually I'll end up with a uh, a blanket. What am I gonna do with all these blankets? I don't know. I think again I'm coming back to the reactionary business. I think it's a, a COVID reactionary thing. Um Finding our comfort zone. Be that um, this is all potentially comfort and safe. So um, making things for the home, making things for, for wearing. Um, we're nesting. Anyway. I'm sure there will be some PhDs written post all of this on social isolation and all that sort of thing. So crochet, knitting, that, and floofing. My other major purchase. Um, excuse me, I'm for. Oh, very nice. Um, my other major purchase. Not knitting related at all. Um, it's art related. Sort of. I bought a motorcycle. Um, yeah. 650 BMW. All um, sort of the road. I think they call them enduro. They were, in, they were called funduro. Because <laughs> you can go places with them. It's got panniers and top box. I'll put a photo in. My plan is to get some uh, painting easel and painting supplies and put them into the panniers and travel up and down our um, valley. We have a fairly scenic and picturesque valley. Um, and just get out and do some painting outside. Um, again, that is very, um, reactionary, 
to the whole COVID business and the, the craziness in the world at the moment. Um, being a solitary pursuit away from people and technology and all the badness and just getting out and doing that. Although having said that, I'm going to be riding around on a massive lump of technology. I'm human, I can't escape it <laughs> completely. <laughs> um, so yeah, go and do that and make pretty things, hopefully. Basically for my own satisfaction. Because um, I can't exhibit anywhere. There's, there's exhibitions and things, need people to go and see them. People to buy the artwork. The artwork in our day and age has been devalued so much that it's pathetic. Um, our government sees it having absolutely no value, so they've not put funding into anything. They've restricted people's access to the arts through cutting funding to teaching facilities and universities and TAFE. Um, art teachers have been squeezed out because their subject area is no longer valued, so they're losing their positions or having to be squeezed sideways into other areas. Um, the creative arts have, have gone online, if it's digital, um, mainstream, fine graphic design that comes from the art so everything that you see around you everything that you use everything that you touch your technology the sales and marketing use it uses creatives creative people now all the creative arts education not only encourages making pretty pictures it encourages their thought process to be creative, um, problem solving, critical thinking, um, lateral thinking, or thinking outside the box, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. Is it government mind control? <laughs> I'm going conspiracy theory. Oh my like, God, no, no. None of that. I've had oh, I've had that up to there. All this COVID business and government lockdowns and all that sort of thing. Oh my God, the weirdos that come out of the woodwork. Um, if that's calling people weirdos is offensive to you or to somebody that you know. There you go. Everybody wants to be offended by something these days because they're all scared. Anyway, there we go. Again, I'm going to edit this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put in some photos of said earthworks. Can I have a go? Anyway. Enjoy your day. What's left it. Or the day to come. Enjoy your weekend. If it's to come. Um, be the best person that you can be. If you want to see a change. Be that change. And I add, add one more to that. The behaviour that you walk past is the behaviour that you're willing to accept. I could become a cranky old lady. I'm not. Bye.